Hello students and today we are going to go over changing a camera view on animated assembly models. Uh, the idea today is that you already know how to do the animated views from the exploded drawings to show how parts go back together but sometimes it's important to show a different view so this presentation is going to show you just how to do that. So we're going to talk about the tools needed to change the camera view in assembly animations, steps on how to change the camera view. We're going to go through that detail by detail so that way um, you can get a clear understanding of it and see it. And I'm going to flip back and forth between this PowerPoint and then also Autodesk Inventor showing you how to do it. And then the best practices, we're going to go over a few of those, I think I have four of them, of where to place the camera. So the reason we're doing this is that there's times when in an animation of an assembly it lacks an important detail but it needs to be highlighted. And if you just do your standard isometric view you won't necessarily show that detail. It may be on the back or an engagement may be on the back of the part or there could be a detail that you need to know. Something like that that needs to be done and needs to be shown in the camera view. So what I've got here is actually an example of what I have done to be able to change the camera view. So this one is a um, the desktop organizer project. So here I'll click on it and the animation should play. So as you can see I changed the view and then it shows exactly the engagement. So you can see where the lines are with the tweaks and then each one of those I can change and put it in. So uh, and, and as it steps through here you can see where that engagement's important and then we're gonna go back in and then see that view and then at the end what I do is I go back out and show the complete assembly all together too. So that, that also helps quite a bit. So uh, what we're going to talk about though is creating the exploded view in an assembly model. That's something that you've already done. So if you need help with that go back to the you know the exploded CAD assembly models for PowerPoint detail. And then the animation, I'm going to assume you've already created the animation because all the assignments in this project are using previous animations that you've already done. So, but if you need help with that, you need to go back and look at the animated model or animating assembly models and exporting the video PowerPoint for detail. So, those you're going to need already and have them completed. So, but what we're going to show you is that we're going to open a presentation file that was previously created and then you want to go to the browse filters button and click on it. So this browse filters button is this little button right here. It's super secret button number 12 I think it is. But once you click on that you're going to end up with this information here and then what you want to do is be able to select the sequence view. Normally it comes up and it's, it defaults to the assembly view but for what we're wanting to do to, to be able to change the camera you need to put it in sequence view. So then once you do that, it changes the view a little bit, but you're going to have these tasks and you need to open up those tasks and then those tasks are going to be broken down into each individual sequence that you already set up before in your animation model and your, your recording that you already made. So if you right click on the specific sequence you want, select it and edit, you want to click on edit, so you right click edit then what that does is bring open another window and that window is called the edit tasks and sequences window. So once you get to that then what you're going to do is go back to your model which you know as you can see I didn't have room to fit it on the PowerPoint but it's right over here and then you can move the model to where you want and then once you get the view to be set what you want to show the correct engagements you simply click on set camera and then that lets you uh, control or set the camera for that specific tweak that you set up and then once that you click on set camera then you click apply and then you click the OK button and then it sets it for that tweak so and then when you're in here this is very important too when you're in the model and you're moving it around and changing the camera view there's some function buttons that help you an extreme amount and you really should get used to using these because they're very very useful. So the hold F2 and pan with the mouse that's one. Uh, depending on your mouse too like if you have a scroll wheel you can hold the scroll wheel down and then move the model around too or you can just hit the F2 button. F3 what that allows you to do is zoom in and zoom out with the mouse and then once again also with the scroll wheel you can just zoom in and zoom out with the mouse that way too. There's a couple different ways to do it as with Inventor there's always more than one way to do something. 
Um, the one I use all the time is the F4 button, and that's the free orbit with the mouse. So if you hold F4 and then move your mouse within the free orbit tool, then that allows you to move your part. And then as soon as you let F4 off, then that free orbit goes away. So there's no clicking over on the right side of the screen, and then you're going back to it after you do your orbit. You just hit F4, it pops up, and then you change it, and then you go back to it. And then F5 is very convenient because if you goof something up, it goes back to the previous view. And you can continue hitting F5 and go back, and then go back and back. It's kind of like that undo button, uh, or Control Z in Microsoft Office products. So. And then F6 brings you back to the original view. So if you know you really messed something up and you want to go back, you hit F6 and that takes you back to there. So that's, you know, take notes on those, you know, hit pause right now and write those down because you're going to be using those and I'm going to expect you to know those. So um, what I alluded to before is once you use those tools then and get the model set to the camera view that you want, uh, after you click on set camera, as you can see right here, then the apply button actually darkens and you can click on it and then you're going to click on OK. That's what you're going to want to end up doing there for your model. It's going to help you out quite a bit um, and, and make things look a lot better. So what I'm going to do right now is tab over to my um, puzzle cube. So I've got it in here. I already had it set on sequence view. Normally it comes up with model view, but as you can see, you can toggle through there. So if you click on sequence view, you need to click on the plus right here to expand the tasks and then I right click on sequence click edit and then what it does is it actually brings you to whatever the current camera view is so once you're there then you've got this edit tasks and sequences here so let's say if I just wanted to click on F4 change my orbit a little bit and just say I'm going to put it there I click on set camera apply and then OK now that disappears I can go back to my assembly view go to my animation let's make that 15 just because we're going to be going through here kind of quick and then that's the new view I set and the key here is is you want to show what you're actually doing so as you can tell here this is a this one's a pretty good example it is starting to tweak in but there's a whole side of that part that I can't see this back side of the part so what I'm going to do is rotate this over a little bit here and then that way you can see the engagement but much better so from the previous view this whole section apart here this one piece on this part you couldn't see it from the previous view so that's where it becomes advantageous to be able to use this changing the camera view so now I know that was I believe the third tweak so what I'm going to do is go back to here sequence view open up my tasks I can right click on sequence and come up with edit it's going to take me to this camera view which I know is the wrong one so now I'm going to rotate over and get this thing kind of where I want it here use a couple of the tools I used F4 and then F2 to pan, to pan this to get where I want now I'm going to say right about here looks good so I'm going to hit set camera apply and then click OK so now that's where it takes it to. So I'm going to go back, assembly view, we're going to animate this, and then we're going to run through this. As you can see, it takes me to the first tweak, then we're going to go to the second tweak for this yellow piece, and then you can tell how that camera view actually changed and it's able to show that engagement. So that's one of the things you really want to do is show the engagement. So even on like this last, this part here, the blue part that's coming in, it shows these pieces here and then how it's going to engage into the actual assembly. So there's a, there's a lot of uses for this because you know when, when you get further along in your careers as engineers you're going to be doing this to show operators on an assembly line. It may be a repair tool, could be a catalog, could be something online to show someone how to pull your product apart and put it back together but it's really key to be able to know how to do this and it really sets your designs apart from others and really puts you in that upper level so we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint now and here's an example and this is what we just went through on inventor itself so this is where the orange piece actually comes in the tweak is set here but as you can tell back in that corner there's a part that we can't even 
see. And then the, all the engagements in this area isn't even shown. So the better view would be here where we have this part on the piece that shows, or you know, one of the cubes on the part. And then you can see where the engagement, as it comes in, you can tell, okay, this thing goes in, it's gonna sit right here, and then that way you can kinda get a, get a much, much better idea of what's going on there. So here's some best practices. Also, you wanna show the key surfaces of the part that is moving. So for instance, on that orange part, the key surfaces would be here. You wanna make sure you show those key surfaces. And then do not show car part crossing over or behind other parts because then you're gonna lose it and then you can't see it well enough and you don't really know what's going on. And then you wanna show the engagement of the part into the assembly. So same thing, if I go back one slide here, on this orange part, it shows it in. And if you remember back on the blue part where it engaged into this area and into this area, that helps where we change the camera view around to see just how that engagement works. And, and you get an idea that it fits actually around this green part. So that helps quite a bit. And then a small tweak, uh, what I like to do is a small tweak at the beginning and the end of the animation to set to show the entire assembly. If you go back and look at the previous video at the very beginning of our desktop organizer, it tweak, there's a small tweak and then it shows the whole thing in an isometric view. And then you show each individual engagement on each of the tweaks and then it goes back to I set up a really small tweak, only moved like 10 thousandths of an inch, but then that allowed me to go back and show the entire part and everything all in one. So that worked out extremely well to give you that general view. It makes it look very professional at that point in time. So, so that's changing camera view, best practices. Uh, here's another example in the desktop organizer. You can see where there's this back tab. If you'd left it in isometric view, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see that. But that tab actually needs to fit over this part. So the animation needs to be set up so it clearly shows that and it makes it very understood to anyone that may be using that part. So um, this is where it shows it just before it's placed onto the body. And then this, you can tell, you know, this U-shaped piece fits right over this piece. So it works out very well. It gives you a clear explanation of how the parts assemble. So in review, you know, you first you have to create your explode view and then set up your animation. Then you go to your browse filters button. That's a super secret button number 12, I think. And then select a sequence view. And once you get to that, you can right click and edit on your sequence you want to modify. After the edit task and sequence window appears, move the part and assembly into a logical position per the best practices. And then click on set camera, apply it, click OK, and move on to the next sequence. And don't forget, you don't want to do it with just one sequence. You want to do it for multiple sequences. Each and every one of your sequences or tweaks may actually need to be moved with the camera view to make it look uh, like a very professional presentation at that point in time. So, well, I hope um, all this makes sense. If you have any trouble, this is the great part with a screencast like this. Go back, re-review it. Don't forget, when you're watching it, always pause, take a look at it, go back, try to understand it. And then, of course, if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me in class. Thanks.